Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Thursday, July 1st, 2021 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is, I value the lessons from my heels. And oh my goodness, we're kicking off July. We have some interesting energies in July um, and starting now, <laughs> kicking it right off the bat. So we have the moon in Aries, which will kind of add a little oomph to everything else that is happening. So just keep that in mind. Now, our biggest thing today is Mars opposite Saturn. So we have Mars in Leo, Saturn in Aquarius. Now in opposition, can bring about balance, but an opposition can bring up push and pull energy as well. I also have to mention that this is being T-squared. Um, so we have a square, both Mars and Saturn, squaring Uranus in the sign of Taurus. So that T-square just adds just a little bit more intensity to it, and we are building to the Mars-Uranus square. Uh, on the third. So that Uranus energy is likely to trigger things. So even if you figure out this balance, it's like a wild card that's just going to be kind of like throwing triggers at you. The beautiful news is this can be very healing. Um, and unfortunately, Joe just walked out the door because uh, he was just talking about how healing, it's not always an easy thing. You know, sometimes it is really a grit your teeth and do it thing. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying that it's has to be hard, but it may not be easy. <laughs> um, so Mars and Leo has the heartfelt approach. It wants to move in alignment with the heart, with its passion. Um, Mars and Leo, like any fiery energy, can find itself getting very frustrated. That's a normal energy for Mars, but especially Mars and Leo, and especially when we have Saturn coming in. Because Saturn is like the parent or grandparent or teacher with all of the rules like oh you can't do it that way no you can't do that you can't do this you can't do that and so mars is likely to be like ah, what can i do <laughs> um so keep that in mind uh whether you feel like the mars person or whether you feel like the saturn person because you may occupy both roles at one point or another during the day there's importance in both of these energies. So Mars and Leo, the importance of following your own heart, the importance of being aligned with your passion. Um, I think that's very important. And even like listening to your inner child and taking inner child aligned and also adult aligned action as well, very important. But then again, the Saturn energy, Saturn aligns us ultimately with our purpose. And sometimes there are things that we have to do in a day that we may not necessarily want to do. So the heart may be like, or I think of like the heart and the brain, um, those comics, I love the heart and the brain from the, uh, the Awkward Yeti. Uh, <laughs> so the heart may be like, la-di-da, I want to eat breakfast. And then heart's like, la-di-da, I do not want to do dishes. And yes, they have to be done at some point, right? And so it's working with things that you love and allowing what you love and it's also bringing in that responsibility and so that's what we're working on finding the balance honoring our heart but also honoring that responsibility and honoring the energies of purpose and showing up in purpose on purpose now again these can blend and meld beautifully, but they don't always do so. So it's really up to you to use your discernment on how to work with balancing these energies. Now with Mars and Leo, there may be ego flares, um, the shoulds from, from Aquarius, uh, Saturn and Aquarius definitely could trigger those eager ego flares, the eager ego flares. Um, and then, like I said, the Uranus energy also has trigger potential and may bring up worth stuff in all of this. So it can get a little tempestuous. Um, I would also say that Mars and Uranus square that we're building into can really push people's buttons. It can really make people lose it. So, you know, if you're playing the role of Saturn for somebody, maybe back up if you can. If you, you know, if you can, because a lot of times people's internal Saturn can be enough. Not always, but watch for that because, <laughs> oh, that energy is not fun. So 
like I said, moon in Aries is just amplifying our reactivity. It can amplify our passion. It can also amplify our frustration in all of this. So the moon in Aries is going to be connecting with Venus, um, with the sun in Cancer, oof, uh, with Saturn, and with Mars through that day. Oof, the moon trying Mars. Let's start with that. So moon in Aries, Mars in Leo. That's later in the evening that that connection is happening, but that could be, even though it's a trying, it could be a fiery combustion. If, you know, if you've been kind of holding back the frustration, I would say with this energy, making sure you have an outlet. That Sun and Cancer, Mars, not Mars, sorry, uh, Moon and Aries energy, it's a square that also may push it. It may push some of your emotions to the surface. You may even find expanded emotions in and through this be aware of your volcanoes through the day <laughs> tend to your emotions listen to the feels listen to the lessons you are your feels are telling you and have an outlet because otherwise if you try to hold this back it will come up and out and it will not be pretty <laughs> so not that it should be I'm not saying that it should be pretty at all but sometimes we end up erupting on somebody about something that doesn't even matter. So that's kind of what I'm worrying about more so than let yourself ugly cry all you want. Just watch for erupting on somebody who probably doesn't deserve the eruption, you know? Um, let's see. Uh, moon trying Venus. Creativity might be a good outlet. Um, getting out in beauty may also kind of help recalibrate you if you are feeling grumpy. So spend some time in things that you think are beautiful or even just tending to your own beautiful self could make you feel good too. Uh, yes, and moon connecting to Saturn. Again, Saturn playing such a large role this day. See if you can filter some of this energy into purpose. It doesn't even have to blah, 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 blah. It doesn't even necessarily have to be your purpose, but just something that feels purposeful can help you align in all of this as well. So um, I have the clean to the past card. So watch for old energies surfacing that are needing to be dealt with. I also have the maturity Card. So hopefully we can mature, deal with these things maturely. This card is also, it's the Ace of Pentacles or the Ace of Earth. Get grounded to help support yourself. Be mature about what you need to move through these energies. And it's not just a wham bam over. For the first week plus of July, we've got some, you know, intense things that we are working through. Um, comparison. Comparison is probably going to be one of your biggest robbers of joy and biggest mood swinging energies. Try not to get stuck in comparisons. Um, the Fool card, I actually have this in reverse. I would say be, be educated on the steps that you're taking. Today is not a day to like use your illusion, for instance. <laughs> we have the Beyond Illusion card, actually. Um, Know the steps that you're taking because, again, this energy can be so tempestuous. So don't be naive. Like, really stand in the maturity of things and really listen to deeper layers. So if you would like a July overhead uh, or overview, I will be posting that on my Patreon today. So you can go check that out. Come join my Patreon group and help support me for the work I do. Um, besides that, you can always book a reading. Email me, MimiClark at gmail.com. Besides that, the better it gets, the better it gets. There's more than enough love in the world for you. You have the power and stay curious. Namaste.